All right, welcome to week six. We are finally getting into Python, and welcome to the World Cup. Now, again, I'm assuming you've watched the lecture and you've read the notes. If these videos are helpful, like and subscribe, all right? There are some functions here that I am going to be circumventing. I will try and show you some means of getting them done. However, I try to keep the code simple. There are some things that you should know about Python by now to help circumvent some of these things. Like, I'm not going to be using len because I believe there's an easier way to code this program to get us from start to finish. So let's take a look at what it wants from us. Number one, don't forget it wants answers text to be filled out. I'm not going to be filling that out. I'm going to show you two ways to do that. One is how they show you to do it. Also, at the end of this video, after I say goodbye, there is going to be an Easter egg for some of you guys who want to learn a little bit more about Python that will actually calculate the time for you. So I'll be showing you that as well. All right, so getting into this, the first thing it wants us to do is read teams into memory from file. Notice that every hashtag after the original hashtag is a note of mine. So it's going to be another function we need to do to implement what we need to accomplish. So starting on our read teams into memory file. The first thing that we need to do is actually with our open file name, we need to rewrite some things. So we're going to go in there and we're going to do with, I'm going to do open file name as F. And let's close that out before I miss that. And we're going to do reader equals, and it's going to be csv dot dict reader and f. So for each row in reader, for row in reader, we're going to append each team's dictionary to the teams in the list. So we're going to make some appends here, right? Teams dot append, and we're going to open this up, and it's going to be a parenthesis and a bracket, and it's going to be quote team, end quote, I'm going to change that to row of team. So that's now we're declaring the team, right? And we also need a rating. It said we needed two inputs. So we have our team, and now we need our rating. And it's going to be int row rating. Close that out. Finish that off. And let's go back and end this quote right here. And that'll finish that. So now we have our counts function, right? So to do, let's scroll down, simulate end tournaments and keep track of counts. So we need to determine the winner of the tournament and we need to increment the team's win count in the counts dictionary. So what we're looking for is 4i in range of n. We need to determine the winner. So the winner is equal to simulate tournament. of teams and once we've done that let's simu spell simulate right uh, we need to increment the team's win count by the counts in the dictionary so if winner in counts we're going to do counts winner plus equal to one and else We're going to do counts winner equal to 1. Now, in this particular function, I think this is the one that wanted us to use the length, right? The code I've written is shorter, but if you wanted to go the route of writing the length, I already programmed it here. It would look something like this. While len of teams is greater than 1, simulate round, and then returning the teams and whatnot. Uh, that also required some other modifications in the code. This way is going to be an easier, shorter way to do it, so I don't understand why we wouldn't take the shorter route of doing things. So moving on, we're going to go to the simulate tournament, returning the name of the winner. So the to-do was only listed there. So we need to simulate rounds until there's only one team left, and then we need to return the name of the winning team. In this case, we are going to use the len that they wanted for us to use, so we still get to make use of it. So while the length of teams is greater than one so anytime there's more than one team remaining we need to simulate a new round so teams equal simulate rounds and of the teams remaining and after that we need to return the name of the winning team once there is one so we're going to return team 
zero and the name of the team. And let's see how that worked out here. So in order to run this program, it wants us to use this information here. We're not going to use the timing aspect yet. So we're going to program this in. And it looks like I have an error on line 23. So let's see what I missed here. And it's not actually line 23 that's being impacted. What it is is I got a little ahead of myself. So the first thing that I should have done is teams equal and then put what it's equal to. Let's actually space that out a little bit like that and then I need the file name which is why you see it's highlighted there because it hasn't yet been declared so file name needs to be declared as system dot argv1 which is from your notes so now that file name has been declared we should be able to run our tournament except that I forgot a comma my apologies let's see if that works out now running our tournament again and something I should have caught because it was underlined here let's move this in and let's run tournament again. There we go. Now, in order to check the time, first we're going to do it the way that it wants you to do it, right? So it's telling you to go ahead and run time. We're just going to use the 2018 example right here. And we're going to plug that in, and it's going to tell us what the time is right there. And then it tells you, in order to update your answers.txt, it wants you to know how long it takes to run uh, 10, 100, and you keep going up and up and up right so then you simulate that by changing your n up here right from a thousand to ten to one hundred and you run time each each time so going ahead and doing it that way is going to be one way to fill in your answers text so that completes python if you want to see the easter egg stick around for a bit otherwise you guys are good run your timing functions get those in your answers text and get them uploaded just to make sure this thing works real quick let's go ahead and run check on it the answers text will not be complete you guys need to fill that in on your own stick around for the extra code to show you how to get that information all right this code looks good guys sorry don't forget I missed this comma here and don't forget to declare teams and file name like I did I got ahead of myself because there wasn't a to do there so I didn't do it but moving on this all works so for those of you who stick around we'll see you guys in a bit this is CS50 that was World Cup I am Devin and as always you are awesome see you soon All right, for those of you guys who stuck around, let's start playing with this a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import time. And now that we have time, we're going to change our end value here, and we're going to give it the array that is needed. So we're going to do 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and 1 million. And we're going to go under our rating here. So we're going to scroll down under rating on this line here and we're gonna add a new line so for n in n we need to start the timer so timer and it's gonna be start time is equal to time dot time and then we need to move our counts out here Oops. And because we had to move the counts out, we need to move everything else out now, right? So let's move all of this out. And now we need to see how much time has elapsed. So how do we calculate that? We're going to go past this print F right here. And we're going to calculate elapsed time. I spelled that wrong, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So we need elapsed time is equal to time dot time and we need to start the time right start time so now we need a printf function that's gonna work with that elapsed time and actually I put this in the wrong place because we're gonna use that print function there right so let's put this here and we'll put our print function for time after that time has come so calculate time so elapsed time equal to time dot time and start time. Now under this printf, we're going to put our new printf that actually tells us how long it took for the time. So let's do printf 
for time taken, and we're going to use that elapsed time. So print, and we're going to do F inside the parentheses, and it's going to be elapsed time, and curly brace, elapsed time, and we need 0.3 seconds, right? So 0.3, F, close your curly brace, S, end quote, and one more, we're gonna do print what is listed above. So now, if I've coded this right, we should be able to take this portion here without having to time each one individually and run it. And I need to fix line 36 now because now we're gonna be using lowercase n, not capital N. And let's see if this runs. All right, so I missed one more thing here. On line 48, I had a capital N, so it originally looked like this, and I forgot to change it to the lowercase n because remember, we're doing n in n now. And now when we run this thing, all right guys, so here's some updates. I found some of the errors that had to do with the location of the loops. In Python, your loops are indicated by where things are tabbed in and out. So if we were to remove this, it would be in a different loop. So we don't use parentheses like we do in C, so I've got everything updated here. This is the printf statement here we need. The elapsed time and the start time both had to go in the for n in n loop. Now once we've got all that sorted out, now when you run your program, not only will it calculate the winners, but it will also output the simulated time of the number of simulations rather than just running them one by one using the time function. It's a pretty cool little way to do things. You'll see here that for a million it took 7.359. If you scroll up, here's 100,000. 0.738, here's 10,000, 0.070, here's 1,000, 0.008, and here's 100, and 0.001. So when you start to get better with coding, even though it's asking you to do them one by one, there actually are some functions that you can get in here with Python and make them do that for you. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.